Number 16 is the fallen tower, because, according to Kabbalah, because in reality we are a fallen humanity. We are a fallen humanity. We used to be, you know, the Adams and the Eves used to be people who lived uh, 1,500 years, 1,200 years to 1,500 years. And why is it that today we live only 70, 80, or 90? Thank you for downloading this podcast. My name is Richard Rucroft. You're listening to Gnostic Lectures. This is Lecture 16. The Three Laws, the Law of Return, the Law of Reincarnation, and the Law of Recurrence. My host today, Mr. E. Jim G. Ross. How are you, Jim? Fine. Thank you, Rick. Thank you for inviting me. You know, today we are going to be talking about three different cosmic laws. The same way that is a law of gravity, there are other cosmic laws, natural laws. We can also speak about uh, these other three. The law of return. Number two, the law of reincarnation. And number three, the law of recurrence. It's important to try to immerse, you know, within what we are going to be saying. We have spoken in the past about the absolute the homeland of the spirit. Remember that we said that we are a spiritual beings. We have a body, we have a mind, we have a soul. It means that this is the homeland, our real homeland. We descended from there into the universe. And we could say that we were planted in every planet, these different planets. So now we are here, planted on earth. So. It's important to try to understand why are we here, okay? What's the highest purpose of life and the highest purpose of the universe, you know? According to Gnostic anthropology, Gnostic cosmology, Gnostic psychology as part of anthropology, isn't it awakening our consciousness? But if the universe, remember, the universe is alive. Our planet Earth is a living gigantic organism. What about the galaxy? What about many, many galaxies? The infinites, which are groups of organized galaxies. So the purpose of the galaxies and the planets and our own purpose is to awaken consciousness. And in, in a religious term, consciousness, consciousness means soul. But on the other side, consciousness also means light. So where there is more light in the universe, there is more consciousness. So every sun, if the planet Earth is alive, every sun is also alive. It's a living, gigantic organism, you see? And that corresponds with our own heart. But we will explain that later in different lectures, in other opportunities. So then we are here you know, to awaken consciousness. Or we, can, we could also say to reach illumination, to incarnate our real being, the self-realization of our real being. Then we can return to the absolute at the end of the days when the planet Earth dies with more light that, than with the percentage of light that we descended. So then it's a victorious journey. So this is a very important question that everybody's asking from time to time. Do we have only one life to live? You know, many, many modern religions, we could say Christianity and Catholicism and a few others, you know, say, oh, there is only one life. It is true that after we die, we continue alive on the other side. But physically, we have only one life. Allow me to say this, you know, there are many other religions, ancient religion, the Hindu religion, the Egyptians, you know, the Buddhist religion, 
the ancient Greeks and many other religions, even the Jewish religion. So there is more than one life to live because imagine children that were born in countries where they're starving to death. Would it be fair that a child was born and will die in a few weeks out of starvation? And the divinity is not given any other chance to that child. You know, just try to be, you know, just, let's try to communicate, you know, let's try to feel reality the way it is. Is that right? That some people were born to be wealthy and, and an incredible amount of people are in a different situation. So if we have only one life and nobody could have more opportunities to improve ourselves, to correct ourselves, so why are we doing it here? Do you believe we can awaken our consciousness to reach illumination if we were born in Africa or in Latin America or in, in a country where there is famine, you know, and we are dying of starvation in a few weeks? Can we reach illumination, enlightenment? It's impossible. It's impossible. And the divinity is, you know, is justice itself. So in reality, according to Gnostic anthropology and Gnostic cosmology and Gnostic psychology and Gnostic philosophy and Gnostic science and Gnostic art, we have more than a life, much more. You know, superior beings like angelical beings, they reincarnate, but common individuals who are not superior beings, they don't reincarnate, they just return. So we are going now to repeat the three cosmic laws that we are going to try to develop. Number one, the law of return. Number two, the law of reincarnation, which is different than return. And number three, the law of re recurrence. Ancient religions, and also the Gnostic do agree with them, because in reality the Bible and many sacred books have been mutilated. Please remember my words. Sacred books have been mutilated for many reasons, many reasons, you know. One of those reasons are conflicts, wars, you know, where the invaders to a country destroy the sacred books. Many originals are missing, you know. We have to remember the Gnostic Gospels. They, they disappear from the Bible, original Bible, and they were found in Egypt, 1945, or they were found the Dead Sea Scrolls at the end of the 1800s. But this is for all religions. All religions, you know, have been mutilated in their teachings. Some of them very ancient teachings coming from millions of years ago. According to the Buddhist religion and the Hindu religion, to be more specific, we have 108 lives as a cycle. This is only one cycle. So at the end of that cycle, Mother Nature recycles. It means planet Earth recycles. And this is what's happening today. The planet Earth is recycling. It means regenerating through global catastrophes. Earthquakes, tsunamis, volcanic eruptions, typhoons, you know, all kind of phenomena of nature. But the process, the, the, the process of regeneration is needed. Otherwise, the planet will get sick and eventually will die. We said that this, our planet Earth is alive and eventually will die. It will transform into a moon, a cosmic cadaver. So during that process of, you know, recycling, Mother Nature is teaching us something. Do we also have to recycle together with the planet? The answer is yes. Of course we have. If we don't recycle, we will disappear. We'll be destroyed in the process of recycling. We won't be able to survive to those global catastrophes, tsunamis, earthquakes, volcanic eruptions, and it's happening already. Don't we see it? And we're aware of that. If we analyze, you know, the universe, this is the law of return. We all return, without exception, 108 times. And if we analyze, you know, our planet Earth is traveling within the solar system, within the galaxy, and everything repeats. 
You know, there is always a new day, there is always a new night, there is always a new year, a new month. So the law of return is everywhere. The planet Earth traveling will come back to the same position, but in a different in a different level. It could be in a higher spiral or in a lower spiral. But the law of return is everywhere. So during that process of returning to the original points, we are immersed within the same phenomenon of nature. So we always come back with a different body, you know, a different personality. So we all, all come back 108 times. So today, most of humanity is experiencing the 108 life, the 108 lifetime. What's going to happen after that? But it's important also to understand why 108, 108. It's a Kabbalistic, you know, everything is Kabbalistic. All numbers are connected with Kabbalah, an ancient science given to humanity by the angel Metraton, a master, a superior being. So if we try to add 1 plus 0 plus 8 makes 9, number 9. That's the ninth sphere according to esoteric the schools. The ninth sphere represents sex. So we are all here because of a sexual act between our physical father and our physical mother. But number nine, you know, represents is the same number six but reversed. So we could say that number six is connected with animal sex and number nine, we could say true humans sexuality. We're not going to explain that today, probably in the future. So, 108 lives represents number nine, according to Kabbalah. And it's a way of teaching us, subconsciously, also a very important process of awakening consciousness for all of us to, to understand, because the Bible speaks about the Jacob's ladder. This is a process of ascension. It's up to us. It's up to us, as we said, we descended from the absolute with a certain percentage of light. Are we going to come back to the absolute in a billion years with the same percentage of enlightenment? Or are we going to ascend with a higher percentage of light? Instead of being a spark, shouldn't we come back transform into a flame? You see, that's extremely important because if we come back the same spark, after a billion years living here on Earth or in more than a planet, then we will become a failure. We will come back, return to the homeland of the spirit, transform into a failure, a complete failure. And we are here for a higher purpose, which is to reach more and more enlightenment, more and more light, more and more consciousness, more and more awareness about reality, about the laws of the universe. So, what happens if we don't recycle ourselves at the end of the 108? You know, today, as we said, most of people are having the 108 life. So, if we don't ascend into a higher level, this is a test, you know. It's an exam given to us by Mother Nature, the wife of the Holy Spirit the feminine as aspect of the divinity, and the Holy Spirit, that we could say the masculine aspect of the divinity that descended from the Absolute. Fire and water that live within ourselves is the divinity itself. So if we don't transform ourselves, if we don't recycle ourselves, and as we said it before in past lectures, if we don't annihilate the animal psychology or the ego, the unconscious mind, the unconscious emotion, the unconscious way of life, the egotistic psychology, it means that we are not, we haven't been able to recycle ourselves. So Mother Nature will do the job, but when we die, we are going to be recycled in the interior of the earth. The, we could say the mineral kingdom immersed or the infra-dimensions of nature. In that location where the magma, the liquid fire, you know, where all minerals melt, 
you know, in a volcanic eruption, we could see how the magma is coming out, being vomited by planet Earth, you know, that gigantic living organism, which is also our collective home. So, are we going to stay there after we die for an eternity? Not really, you know. We could say it's, it's a long period of time, but until Mother Nature will help us to recycle, until the ego can be annihilated. Or maybe not all the ego, probably a percentage of that ego. So then we can come back to the surface of the earth to live another cycle, another 108 lives. You see, we have had already many recycling, you know, processes in the past. The Bible speaks about Sodom and Gomorrah, and historically it really happened. That was when the Lemurian continent disappeared under what today is the Pacific Ocean. And another global catastrophe happened, you know, in what today is the Atlantic Ocean, when the Atlantean continent disappeared. And there was another global catastrophe. But there were also other minor catastrophes in between. For example, after the Atlanteans disappeared, and a few survivors were capable of rebuilding a new humanity, a new society. We mentioned that that happened in the ancient China, ancient Tibet, and also in the Gulf of Mexico, the Aztecs, the Mayans, and the Incas, those people who built the pyramids in, in ancient Mexico and ancient Latin America before the Spaniards came. Those people were capable of reaching enlightenment. Re listen to my words and remember my words. They survived because they were capable of recycling themselves. When they were able to recycle themselves, they cooperated with Mother Nature, so Mother Nature protected them. And this is why they survived. They eliminated their ego. They annihilated the animal psychology. So they entered into the real human being's kingdom. Because today we don't live there. Our actual humanity we are just in a stage of animal intellectualism. We are intellectual animals. We are not true humans until we can eliminate the ego. So, basically, how many more cycles are we going to have of 108 lives? According to Gnostic anthropology and Gnostic cosmology, and this is also connected with alchemy and Kabbalah, as we said, ancient scientific knowledge given to us by angelical beings. We have 3,000 cycles. Can you imagine how many opportunities we all have to ascend, you know, into higher levels of consciousness, higher levels of light, enlightenment, high, higher levels of masterhood. You know, the Elohim are more real than we are. Who are the Elohim? They are superior beings that rule, they are ruling planets, solar systems, constellations, galaxies, even groups of galaxies. These are the cosmo creators. You know, they are spiritual beings. You know, they are people made of light, who breathe light. They are our elder brothers, you know, and these people used to be like us, but they didn't get there through evolution, as we said it before. They got there through a tremendous revolution of their soul consciousness. Tremendous sacrifices. A tremendous struggle within themselves. And I alighted their unconsciousness to create consciousness, to create more and more light within themselves. This is important to be comprehended. We all return, okay? When we also, when we return, we forget our past lives. Why do we do that? Because we have ego. The ego is subconsciousness, unconsciousness, infraconsciousness. So, a Gnostic anthropology teaches us, the new psychology, the Gnostic psychology teaches us how to be able to remember our past lives. Is it a dream? Is it something crazy that we're making up right now? It is not. You know, the divinity ga gave us the capability to develop ourselves, you know, as we mentioned it before, our seven endocrine glands correspond to seven superior senses within ourselves. 
The problem is our seven endocrine glands are atrophied. They need to be healed. They need to be cured. They need to be reinforced in their activities. And Gnostic anthropology teaches us how to do that. You know, we are organized all over the world right now. You know, we have books translated into so many languages. And our purpose is to help humanity. Because that way we also pay what we owe to the divinity, to the universe, and also to our brothers and sisters, the entire human race. We are all in the same boat. We are all neighbors within this planet Earth. So our mission is to help each other, is to learn to respect and love each other, even if it is hard to do it, even if people don't believe it, if people don't accept it. So it's important to understand that, you know, so we have died already. Can you imagine? We have died already many, many times. So the problem is we don't remember that we died and we came back with a new body. We all became babies again, children again, 108 times minimum. So it's important to understand that, that, child, that those children that were born, you know, and they will die of starvation in a few weeks, they had more than a chance. After they die, probably they will be recycled downstairs in the inferior dimensions of nature, but they will come back again for a new cycle, a new cycle of 108 lives. So the opportunities are there. We can never underestimate anybody because maybe in past lives, we were also children that died of starvation. When we are selfish and arrogant and greedy because of the ego, we feel more important than anybody else. We are committing a tremendous mistake. Then we will come back being poor in the next life. We have to pay for what we owe. You know, this is important. To reach enlightenment consciousness, nothing is free. It demands a lot of sacrifice. As we said, evolution is not enough. And those people who believe that, you know, being evolutionist, we are all going to become superior beings. They are wrong. With all respect, we are telling them their knowledge is incomplete. Evolution is not enough, enough and we explained that before in other lectures. Because evolution is a mechanical law. It's an ascension half of the wheel of time. When you reach half of the wheel, the other half is a descension. It's not evolution anymore, it's involution. Are we evolving right now? You know, we are evolving technologically, but are we evolving psychologically? With all respect, we are not. We are descending. We are becoming more and more complicated. Everybody's under stress today. Everybody's suffering. Everybody having psychological conflicts, wars and rumors of war everywhere, poverty, unemployment. You know, the economy has collapsed already many times and it will continue collapsing. And we applaud our mistakes and we never learn because we are sleeping 24 hours a day. We are not awakened. We are not real humans. We are just intellectual animals. So the, the purpose of life is to walk away from the animal kingdom and to learn to transform into real humans. But if this is our level of being where we are today, we are imprisoned within the law of return, well, there is a way out. How can we ascend? By learning, you know, to practice the revolution of the soul, revolution of the consciousness by learning to die in the ego consciously, recycling ourselves consciously, by learning to stop being lunar people because we are too much influenced by the moon. The enlightenment will be reached through the solar energies. The sun is light. The moon is a dead body. It's a cosmic cadaver. We don't get anything good from the moon if we want to reach enlightenment. So we have to transform into solar beings. We have to learn to incarnate the fire of the sun. We will explain that later in other lectures in the future. And finally, after we learn to recycle ourselves, to annihilate the ego, and we learn to transform into solar individuals, 
we have to learn to share this knowledge with the entire human race. You want to reach masterhood? Don't live in a cave and meditate every day, you know, isolated from the rest of the world. Today, we're in a different time frame. Today, we have to be immersed within the multi multitudes. We have to be immersed, be immersed within humanity, who is suffering. People are suffering today. People are in troubles. So if we have learned something incredible, if we have the knowledge to ascend, share the knowledge, don't be egotistic. Stop being egotistic, because ego is not intelligence at all. Then we have to share the knowledge with everyone. The death of the ego is extremely important. We have to try to understand the meaning of death. We could say there are three kinds of death. Physical death, mystical death, and the second death. Have you ever heard of the second death? The Bible speaks about that, you know. The second death means the death of the ego in inferno. When we go into the infant dimensions of nature after we die, because Mother Nature will recycle us, Mother Nature will help us to get rid of the ego, but in the middle of tremendous suffering, because the ego has eaten our soul, and our soul is suffering, and our soul, which is also another body, is an electronic body, and the mind is an atomic body, and the emotions are a molecular body. All those bodies, the physical body is already gone when we die physically. But all these other bodies will be suffering in inferno. You know, the ego will refuse to die, will be fighting to stay alive. But the liquid fire of the interior of the earth, which is the same fire of the Holy Spirit, the husband of Mother Nature, will destroy the ego, will annihilate it. So then we'll be able to come back to the surface again for the new cycle of 108 lives again. So it's important to understand that physical death is one aspect to teach us something that because life has a limit. You know, it's good that we have physical death. So then criminal people, evil individuals, don't deserve to live too much. So it's impo if death didn't exist, you know, we would be becoming more and more evil, you know, a planet of monsters instead of, you know, humans. So physical death has been created by Mother Nature, the wife of the Holy Spirit, on purpose. But it's also an alert to teach us that why don't we try in a lifetime to annihilate the ego? to recycle ourselves, so because this is the way to ascend, to reach enlightenment, to reach illumination, to become solar people, and to stop being lunar people. Now, we said the second death happens in inferno, after we, are, we have died. But the mystical death is the most important kind of death. It's learning to die psychologically in our ego, to annihilate the seven deadly sins. To annihilate the Goliath fighting David in the Jewish religion. David defeated Goliath. So David became a king. He reached enlightenment by annihilating his own Satan, inner Satan, his inner ego. He annihilated his unconsciousness and he reached a higher stage of consciousness, enlightenment, illumination. So you see, now we are understanding ourselves better. So this is the way through the annihilation of the ego, annihilation of our own darkness, we can reach enlightenment. So let's say we learn to do it. We learn to become masters. We annihilate a percentage of ego, a very important percentage. We create so a solar nature. And finally, we share the knowledge with the entire human race. And then we'll be tested by superior beings that rule the universe. And this is the way to reach a degree of masterhood. We can call it a living Buddha, like the Dalai Lama is an example. Mother Teresa is probably another case. I personally met a lady, one of the 42 judges of karma, here with a feminine body, another master that reached enlightenment. So, when those people get there, and we all have the chance to get there, 
we all have the potential to be there. Then you become a living Buddha. Let's, you can call it different names, but that's a master. But on the other side, this is a true, complete human being. A person with 12 senses minimum instead of five senses. So after die, let's say you die, we die. We go to the other side, we can ascend into heaven. Nirvana, according to Buddhism. Well, there we can live in a stage of grace. We will continue doing some work, superior kind of work, helping humanity from the other side, helping Mother Nature, because there is so much work to be done on the other side, but it's living in a stage of joy, because we are closer to the divinity. The situation is, right now, listen to this carefully, right now Nirvana or Heaven enter into activity. Why? Because all those superior beings, those an angelical beings, have to reincarnate because they are not common individuals anymore. They have to reincarnate to help us, to do two different things. One is help us because we are in a big trouble and they have the knowledge to teach us. All gurus and all masters and all, you know, people who are into esoteric stuff, esoteric knowledge, there are many, many books about esoteric knowledge. Some of them are very much complete. Most of them are very much incomplete. This is why the purpose of Gnostic anthropology is to put some order to help the, all the esoteric schools to find a more complete perception of the superior, superior kind of knowledge to help humanity. So all these superior beings now are reincarnating to help us. So this is a different cosmic law. When you reincarnate, listen to this, when you reincarnate, you know exactly what to do. You have a mission. You are consciously awakened. You are enlightened already. So you have a mission. You can choose the country where you are going to be born. You can choose the sex, male or female. You can choose your family, the language you are going to be speaking, etc., etc. But when you are a common individual, when you never reached masterhood, what happens? You know, there are angels of life and angels of death. The angels of creation or the archangel Gabriel are the ones who make the connection between the spermatozoa and the ovule of our physical mother. It's not what scientists believe that the strongest the spermatozoa is the one who will procreate the baby. Wrong, you know, wrong. It's not the strongest one because how many babies are born, you know, today, very ill, very sick? Because they carry the karma, the bad luck from past lives. There is a cosmic law that we explained that already in the lecture about karma dharma, you know, the law of cause and effect. So it is not the strongest spermatozoa. Who makes the connection between the spermato spermatozoa and the ovule? It is an angel on the other side. There are millions of angels in our solar system or within the galaxy who perform that kind of job. And they are all masters. They are all people who can reincarnate superior individuals. And their mission, as I said, is they are part of the ray of creation, the ray of Gabriel, the Archangel Gabriel. They are the ones who made the connection. So essentially, we can say we, when, you, when we are part of the law of return, we are being put within the matrix, within the womb of our physical mother, according to the law of karma dharma. But when you are a master and you reincarnate, you can choose your destiny. But in, in our common case, when we are not masters, we are not angels, we are not complete human beings, you know, we are being put according to cosmic law to pay our karma, and also to collect dharma, because we must have done something good in past lives. And this is what we call good luck or bad luck. So now let's move into this second cosmic law, the law of reincarnation. These people are in a different le level of knowledge, different level of understanding of the universe. They have reached a level of enlightenment. And of course, 
as we said, a tremendous amount of superior beings are reincarnating right now to help us. We are in a big trouble, you know. This is the end of the times. This is the end of a cycle. This is the Aquarian age. A process of revolution. Look at what's happening today in the world. Don't you see social revolutions everywhere? People who are arising against their governments. People are creating violence everywhere. Because, you know, the situation is, you know, there is injustice in the world. We haven't created a just society. And of course, when people are starving to death, when people are unemployed, when people cannot bring food into the table to feed their children, what happens? And when a majority of people live like that, what happens? You see the point? So this is why we need help. We need those superior beings to rule us, to lead us. We need to learn. There is a lack of knowledge everywhere. So after we have learned to awaken our consciousness and we have reached the level of complete human beings, living Buddhas like the Dalai Lama, Mother Teresa, as I mentioned before, Mistress Litalantis, one of the lords of karma, reincarnated to help us, that I met personally. You know, you don't have to believe me, but, well, eventually, you know, I'll be able to tell you more about that. And if you read some of the books written by Samaela Onveor, her husband, you'll be able to understand better. You know, if I have the chance to give lectures personally and we can meet face to face, it'll be my pleasure, my honor to answer all kind of questions when the time comes. So, if we remember the Bible, you know, Jesus Christ is talking about John the Baptist. Remember, if you read those paragraphs of the Bible and Jesus Christ says, Elijah is with us again. You know, many people don't accept that, you know. But what he's trying to say, Jesus Christ, is that Elijah, the great prophet, coming from the past, reincarnated as John the Baptist, an illuminated, enlightened individual, superior individual, reincarnated. But this superior individual came to announce the coming of Jesus Christ. And he kneeled down before Jesus Christ because many people thought that John the Baptist was the Messiah, was the Savior. But John the Baptist kneeled down before the, pre the presence and the majesty of Jesus Christ. So, and Jesus Christ described him as Elijah the prophet. We don't have to believe it, but, you know, my duty is to inform you that this is what really happened. So, reincarnated masters. What happened to those reincarnated masters? As, as I said, they come f uh, one of the highest purposes is to help us. That way they create more and more dharma. You know, they pay also karma because we all have a karma one way or another. But on the other side, listen to this carefully, they reincarnate because within the Jacob's ladder, there are higher levels. Listen to this carefully. There are higher, higher levels of enlightenment, higher levels of consciousness, higher levels of masterhood. You know, the next level is the resurrection level. Many people within Christianity and Catholicism don't accept that there is nobody else except Jesus Christ who resurrected. With all respect, with all respect to Christians and Catholics and any other religion that don't accept what we are trying to say, the level of Resurrection does exist. There are many resurrected masters here living on earth. So Jesus Christ was not the only one. But allow me to say this. Jesus Christ, amongst all resurrected masters that live on earth and within the solar system and within the galaxy, he is the highest. The highest of the highest. Why is that? Because after when people reach resurrection, they can live with the same physical body for a million years or more or longer until the planet Earth dies. But some of them choose to renounce, to renounce to that position of perfection. We could say that's perfection within perfection. And they decide to descend 
to acquire more and more wisdom. So they were immortal and now they become mortal on purpose. Well, Jesus Christ performed that experience seven times. Do you know what is that? After he reached resurrection, he renounced to that position, an incredible position of wisdom and perfection, and he descended. And in the middle of tremendous, tremendous sacrifices, he was capable of ascent again, seven times. So what we know about him, when, we, when he reincarnated, when he became mortal on purpose, and he became Joshua ben Pandira in those lands of the Middle East, the man that we call Jesus, Joshua ben Pandira, that incarnated the Christ again for the seventh time. And of course, that made of him a king of kings, higher than all other masters, you know, of the White Lodge. This is why Jesus Christ is the chief of the White Lodge. Even he, ha he not only incarnated the Christ seven times, he ascended into such a level of perfection within perfection, that he incarnated his divine father that lives in the absolute. He became one with his cosmic father. This is why, you know, when Jesus Christ was teaching us, remember my words, please. He was teaching us our father, that incredible prayer, our father. Why is it that he doesn't talk about his individual father? He's talking about the cosmic common father, the father of the universe, not only his individual divine father. You know, he's too high for us to be able to understand, you know, his level of perfection within perfection. But let's come back again, you know, to these two cosmic laws, the law of return, common individual without masterhood, we could say intellectual animals, because we are not part of the human being's kingdom. We have only five senses. But masters who reach masterhood, who are able to reach masterhood through the annihilation of the ego, through the creation of the solar organisms, and through learning to share the entire, with the entire human race this divine knowledge of ascension, the true knowledge about the Jacob's Ladder. These people now are not within the law of return. They are part now of the law of reincarnation. They can choose their mission, their lives, everything. But as we said, there is a higher level of the immortals, those who live with the same physical body for millions of years. And there are many like them. But the situation is these people, because they have no ego, they are not showing off. They are not, you know, showing their powers because this is ego. There are many black magicians, you know, who have developed some powers, who enjoy, you know, showing off, you know, pretending to be saints when they are the opposite. The problem now, before, we, I'm not going to continue with the resurrected superior beings, maybe a tiny little bit more before we complete our lecture today. But what happened with those who reincarnate, these uh, divine superior beings who have reached masterhood already, and they are part of the law of reincarnation? What happens? Some of them fall. Listen to my words carefully. There is a big risk of falling. They are very much awakened, but there are too many temptations on earth, and people don't pass temptations. And listen to this carefully. Who puts the temptation? It's an Lucifer. You know, and people who read the Bible and memorize it and repeat it like a parrot without really understanding the real meaning of those words because the Bible and all sacred books are written in a codified language. That codified language is alchemy and Kabbalah. So if we don't know alchemy and Kabbalah, we won't be able to understand clearly the real messages, the real teachings, the real wisdom that we find in the Bible and all sacred books. So the situation is, Lucifer is the psychological instructor. 
The psychological instructor means the superior being who puts the test. We're being tested. And that is our own inner being, our own God within ourselves, who adopts the position of Lucifer, giving us the test because our Divine Father wants us to ascend. We are here to do that. Or you believe we are here just to have fun, you know, to get drunk every day, to take drugs, to go to orgies every day and to ignore completely that life has a purpose. You know, there are many intelligent individuals who consider themselves very in intelligent, who say clearly life has no meaning. Because in reality, it's very sad to discover that nobody told them, you know. They grew up in a family that only care about materialistic things. And of course, they learn nothing about the purpose of life. And life has a tremendous purpose, which is the Jacob's Ladder. We are here to learn to ascend. Because we are baby spirits. Do you enjoy being a baby forever and ever? Wouldn't you like to grow, to become a child, you know, and to learn to walk, to become a teenager? and an adult, or even a master of masters. It's up to us, you know. We all have those possibilities. So, essentially, you know, as we said, many superior beings that reincarnate fall. And today, and allow me to say this, people in position of power on earth, politicians that rule countries, business people that rule the economy of the world, generals that command millions of soldiers, people in positions of power, many of them are fallen, listen to this, fallen bodhisattvas using an esoteric language. They are fallen masters, fallen masters. And this is why they are using their knowledge, even their power, even their intelligence to commit more and more mistakes. And of course, they will have to pay for it unless they repent. And this is why, you know, those who are reincarnating, they have a tremendous cosmic mission, is to help humanity who is in a big trouble to ascend, not to descend. And this is the situation. It's very, very important to understand that many churches are teaching today that we all go to heaven after we die. And that's not true. With all respect, it is not true. If we have a heavy ego, we are 97% ego, 3% soul, 3% consciousness. How can we go to heaven unless we repent, unless we change, unless we learn to annihilate the ego, unless we, we decide to make, we make a decision that life has a purpose? Why do we suffer? You know, we attract bad luck because of the ego, poverty, unemployment, hunger, Wars, everything happened because of the ego. We are ego ourselves. So if we change, if we annihilate our seven deadly sins, as we said that before in past lectures, we'll be able to awaken our consciousness. We'll be able to rediscover the purpose of life. And we'll be able to ascend, to reach enlightenment. So this is why this is a message not only for intellectual animals. And I do consider myself one of them. I'm an intellectual animal, but I don't like to be anymore. I'm fed up with my position as an intellectual animal. And I want to learn to become a true human, to awaken my consciousness, because this is the purpose of my life and everybody's life. We are here. And if for some reason, in past life we were in a higher position and now we descended, well, the time has come to ascend again because life has no meaning. If we are here to suffer, then there is something wrong with us. Now, so let's talk now about the law number three. We spoke already about the law of return, the law of reincarnation. What about the law of reoccurrence? It means that we repeat, we repeat what we've done before. It's like we carry in our arms a movie and a film projector. And we project our life within the screen of our own mind, of our own soul. 
So we do exactly what we did in past lives in different spirals, higher or lower, either successful experiences or not successful, painful experiences. So we come back to experience joy and also pain. But it's up to us. We meet exactly the same amount of people that we met in past lives. So we meet the same enemies that we created in past lives. And now, let's say I killed someone in a past life, that person will come back to do exactly the same to me. He will collect. He will see me as an enemy. And without knowing what he's doing, he will try to kill me, or eventually he will kill me. Unless I repent myself, unless I change that negative attraction, unless I see that enemy as a friend, unless I learn to love all my enemies. You see the point? These are the teachings of Jesus Christ, Moses, and all gurus, and all illuminated sacred individuals the rich masterhood. So basically, it's very important to understand that. So the law of repeating what we've done before, the law of reoccurrence, is very important to be comprehended. The founder of our school, he was a very illuminated individual, a superior individual. We are not going to be talking too much about him, Samael Onbeor, until in the future in different lectures, but he's the one who brought all the knowledge from the superior dimensions of space. This is the knowledge of the White Lodge to humanity. It's not the knowledge of one individual, even if he's very high. It's the knowledge for the entire universe to ascend, to stop being intellectual animals. So, Samael Onveor wrote 70 books, and in in, in a few books, he described his childhood. He's the kind of superior being who reached, listen to this carefully, he reached resurrection. He incarnated the cosmic Christ also. But he had done it, listen to this, he had done it three times. After he reached resurrection, on purpose, he descended and he became mortal again. And it takes millions of years sometimes to reach to be able to ascend again. The first time where he, when he reached resurrection was in another planet. It wasn't in this planet. We will explain that later in the future. So it took him a long, long period of time to be able to ascend again. So it's important to understand that he was explaining through his 70 books his personal experience, because this is a way of teaching us. If he could do it, we can also do it. His physical father in this last reincarnation, his physical father was hitting him physically since he was a little boy. He suffered a lot. You know, he couldn't, even he was very much awakened, he ended, you know, escaping from home. And sometime, he went to the top of the house and watching the stars at night, he was meditating, talking to the divinity and trying to understand why was he in that very, very painful situation. A physical father that was hitting him physically until he was given the answer. That man that became his physical father, he was an enemy in past lives and he had a duel a duel with that man, and he killed that man. And today, many, many years later, you know, that man became his physical father and came back to collect. So through suffering, through pain, horrible pain, Somail Onveor learned so many lessons. But he had to pass for that kind of experiences, being tested again to ascend again. Now he ascended again. So it's very important that we try to understand all these elements. Also, many people complain about their parents. Oh, I hate my father. I hate my mother. I hate my sister. I hate my brother. Well, you know, we get the family that we deserve. Please listen to my words. We get the family that is meant to be 
because we don't deserve anything better. If we have 97% ego, how can we get angels in our family? People who are looking for a wife or a husband, oh, they are looking for an angel. <laughs> how can we get an angel if we are not angels? You see the point? Unless we learn to ascend, unless we learn to transform ourselves, unless we learn to annihilate the ego. This is the main trouble. And this is why practice all the teachings of your own religion. If you are a Jewish, practice your religion. Don't only say it. Otherwise, you will be betraying Moses and all the prophets. If you are a Catholic or a Christian, practice it. Study your religion. They all teach to annihilate the ego. Otherwise, you will betray Jesus Christ. If you are a Buddhist, annihilate your ego. If you don't do it, you are betraying Buddha. Hindu religion. Learn your religion and practice it. Annihilate the ego. If you don't do it, you are betraying who? Krishna, Lord Krishna. The resurrected master of the Hindu religion. And so and so. And all religions are teaching the same principles. Please remember my words. So thank you very much for listening. If you have any question, Rick, it will be my pleasure to try to answer. That's interesting about the fact that we have number 16. This is uh, Gnostic lecture number 16. Uh, and it's called The Fallen Tower, isn't it, Jim? That's correct, Rick. You know, that's a very interesting question, very important question, because the fallen tower represents that we are the tower. We are, you know, when we walk, don't we look like a tower? If we look at ourselves from the bottom, you know, we are a walking tower. So we are a fallen tower. The entire human race are fallen. So the Bible, you know, and all sacred books speak about the Adams and the Eves, Adam and Eve, you know and the fall of Adam and Eve. So in reality, they are our real ancestors were angelical beings. They were superior beings. Some of them were immortal and their, you know, their children later became mortal. You know, the cosmic law was given physical body to many angelical beings that were on the other side and they reincarnated. So they were all Buddhas, living Buddhas. But that was the time of Lemuria that happened 18 million years ago. And that was the time when they fell from a stage of grace. So this is why since then, listen to this, since then we lost the true human stage. This is why we're not true human. We are just intellectual animals. We are half a way between real humans, complete human beings, with 12 senses or more, and animals who have five senses. Even animals, you know, have their five senses more developed than ours, you know. <laughs> this lecture is about law, cosmic law, and it seems to me that in the teachings of, of um, anthropological gnosis that we have many, many laws for people who are with lots and lots of ego, and as you get rid of the ego and I like the ego, there's fewer and fewer and fewer laws, which reminds me of what Christ said. I think he was asked, what is the highest law? And the highest law is love, right? That's correct. Yes. Yeah. Essentially, you know, this is the only law that rules the absolute, the homeland of the spirit, where we descended from and where we are going to return at the end of the times. So love but it has to be conscious love because love is wisdom and love is consciousness. So if love is not conscious, it's not real love. And what most people call love in these times here is uh, something completely different altogether. Yeah, of course. So basically, you know, love without ego is real love. Yeah, every time I listen to one of your lectures, I, I learn more and more all the time myself. So thank you very okay. much, Mr. E. Jim G. Ross. You've been listening to Gnostic Lectures. This is lecture number 16. Our website is rickyradio.com. Email at gnosticradio at gmail.com. Thank you uh, for, to our listeners, and thank you, Jim. Thank you very much, Rick. It's been an honor again. <laughs>